there's a lot of NIMBY opposition uh, to housing, particularly multifamily housing. We know uh, that there's lots of challenges in state regulation. Uh, I'm a strong environmentalist. I'm supported by every environmental organization in this race, um, um, and I'm proud of it. But CEQA has created some barriers at the state level. Uh, but at the federal level, I can just say, look, Congress needs to take responsibility for this problem because there's been no significant federal housing legislation in probably three decades. Uh, this has been a policy backwater in Congress. And so first, we need to make it a federal priority. I and mean, we're finally hearing about in this presidential debate. And, you know, it's astounding to me because if you talk to any mayor of any major metro, and I know because I spend a lot of time talking to other mayors, Every one of them will tell you we have a housing crisis. It's not just us. <laughs> we have 44 cities in this country that have at least a thousand unhoused residents. Uh, and most of them are outside of California. So this is a national issue. We need to treat it like that. What, what I have proposed in the book is first, as we look at the office conversion issue, and it's not just office, it's other commercial properties too. It's hotels in particular. Those are much easier to convert. Uh, it's some retail may also be convertible. Uh, and as we look at office building, it's really going to be older office buildings. Those are built typically, you know, before the 70s that have much smaller floor plates than modern office buildings do. And those are also office buildings that are likely to be vacant much, much longer because they're class B, class C office buildings, and they're just not very desired or demanded. And so really focusing on those kinds of buildings, um, I want to expand what's called the New Markets Tax Credit which is a tax credit that's currently used for rehabilitation of historic buildings. And I want to expand it and say, look, this is going to be a massive uh, tax credit program to incentivize the revitalization of downtowns throughout the country. Uh, and, you know, downtown, central business districts, other places where you have a large concentration of vacant commercial buildings of all kinds, office, hotel, whatever it might be, we have an opportunity now because there's a crisis in the commercial real estate market. I mean, you know, we don't care now because it's mostly billionaires, you know, who own these buildings or hand their keys back to the bank. Um, but it's eventually going to start hitting the banking system uh, as we see this this work its way through the financial system, and it's going to imperil a lot of regional banks. And what we're seeing right now is a vacancy level nationally is close to 15%, which is higher than it was in the Great Recession. So this is an opportunity for us. Uh, while these properties are in distress, the properties are the, the owners are willing to take a haircut uh, for us to insert a tax credit that would supplant the high cost debt that's typically used to finance construction. And that would essentially enable the pro formas to work, that is to reduce the, the cost uh, to rehabilitate these buildings. And we can then start to transform a lot of vacant buildings that way. Uh, and, you know, also do so in places where we want housing the most, which is near transit and near urban amenities or jobs. Uh, and it's also in a location where you're not going to have a bunch of neighbors coming out with pitchforks because the buildings are already there. It's also the most environmentally sustainable way to build housing because the buildings already exist. So I think there's a great opportunity in this. I mean, Spur recognized it when they they performed that study in San Francisco, and they found that, you know, if we could just convert 40% of the vacant office in San Francisco, which is like 26 million square feet right now, we could have more than 14,000 apartments and condos. That's transformative. So I think that's an opportunity. I think, you know, federally backed financing for homeowners who are of modest income who want to rehabilitate and build ADUs on their property, that could provide an opportunity for more housing. I think we need to streamline the low-income housing tax credit because small communities are not able to avail themselves of that tax credit right now in the expensive areas. It takes too many other levels of financing to make it work. And so I have some ideas in my book about how we could make that a much more nimble tool for local communities who build affordable housing. So I think there's a lot of things we can do at the federal level. But the first thing we got to start with is we got to get Congress to pay attention. What's important to recognize about the existing state rec, uh, local uh, rent control ordinances is um, there is a cutoff period uh, in terms of when the apartment building got built. And if you were to tell builders today that an apartment building that is built today is going to be subject to rent control, uh, that will turn every pro forma upside down. And right now we are seeing virtually no multifamily construction happening in the Bay Area right now. And I say that emphatically because 
I mean, I was just talking to a builder yesterday and I said, was it this bad in the Great Recession? And he said, it's worse now than it was in the Great Recession. There is nobody putting a shovel in the ground. And nobody has sympathy for the builders. I understand that. They're, 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 they're wealthy developers and they'll be fine. What I'm concerned about is we've got a huge supply shock coming because we're going to have a new, look, AI and other technologies are coming very quickly here. We're going to have new demands for jobs. And we're going to go into this next job boom with literally no housing supply. <laughs> that is going to be devastating for renters. And so we have to fundamentally focus on the supply issue first, um, in addition to whatever else we might do. And right now, if what we're telling builders is we're going to make it even harder for pro formas that you cannot currently get financed <laughs> to be able to be viable, uh, we are not going to see any multifamily construction. And so and so, and again, this isn't a matter of builders not making enough profit. Let's be clear. They want to build. They can't get financing to build. They all depend on a bank who's going to lend. And they often depend on equity investors. And all those folks on the outside who make those investments and make those loans look at one very simple issue. What is your cap rate? What is your return on the cost? The cost per, and right now, construction costs are very high. And even when interest rates go down, it's going to remain a very expensive place to build. It costs about $900,000 a unit to build an apartment right now in the Bay Area. Way too high. And that means you cannot get a shovel in the ground if you're also going to constrain rents at the same time. And so constraints on rents make sense on existing buildings, buildings that are already built. But to do it on new construction is going to be very problematic if our goal is trying to get more housing built because overwhelmingly, 95% of the housing gets built in this, this state, despite the fact that we all put a lot of public resources into affordable housing. I led a, a, a ballot measure to increase fees on, on high, uh, high wealth property owners uh, to pay for affordable housing. We spend enormous amounts, more than any other state in the country. And it's still a very small fraction of the actual housing construction that gets built that has any affordable housing money. We depend enormously on the private sector to build our housing in this state as we do in the entire country. So if the pro forma doesn't work, we're not going to get the housing. And so that's my fundamental concern with those proposals that say, hey, let's do it all the way up until the day of construction.